you must have often come across representations of data that look like the pictures that you can see on the screen. These representations are also known as pie charts. So pie charts can be of various types, as you can see. Now, what is the utility of pie charts? With the help of pie charts, since it is an absolute pictorial representation, we can tell how much a particular observation is occupying in the given data set. So as you can see, in the case of a pie chart, we are employing the help of a circle. Now this circle is made up of 360 degrees. And when we are plotting a pie chart, we are plotting the data in the form of certain sectors of the circle. So greater the area of a particular sector, it means that its quantity is more. And lesser the area of a sector, it means the quantity is less. This pie chart actually helps us to plot data that has been given to us in the form of percentages. So let us find out how we can plot data in the form of a pie chart. So over here, we have a certain situation. A farmer wanted to leave behind his circular plot of land to his five sons. Now the farmer wanted to divide this circular plot of land in between his five sons in the following percentages. So his five sons, Ankit, Sam, Gopal, Mohan, and Suresh, these sons were to receive the land in the proportions of 20%, 30%, 15%, 25%, and 10%. So Ankit would be getting 20, Sam would be getting 30, Gopal 15, Mohan 25, and Suresh 10% of the circular plot of land. Now these sons started to quarrel. And because they didn't know how much 20% or 30% actually corresponded to in terms of area. So let us help them find out how they can divide the plot of land in the percentages that have been given. So in order to do so, we have to draw a pie chart. And since a pie chart is represented in the form of sectors of a circle, how can we find out the angle of a sector? The angle of a sector can be found out for a particular data item that is to be represented in the following manner. That is the value of the item divided by the sum of values of all items multiplied by 360. That is the total angle of the circle. So in this case, let us find out how we can do so. So as you can see, Ankit is getting 20%, Sam is getting 30%, Gopal 15%, and so on for Mohan and Suresh. Now, if you add up all these values, that is 20 plus 30 plus 15 plus 25 plus 10, how much will this give us? This will give us 100%. That is the total land. Now over here, 100% is the sum of value of all items. So let us see how we can calculate the angle of sector for Ankit. So for Ankit, applying that formula, what will we get? We will get value of the item. That is his value in the plot of land. 20% divided by 100. That is the sum of values of all items into 360. In a similar manner, if I have to find it out for Sam, what will I get? I will get 30, that is his value, divided by sum of all the values, 100, into 360. And in a similar manner, we proceed for the rest of the sums. So for Ankit, what will be the value? I will cancel out 0, as it is common. And again, because it is common here as well. And thus, for Ankit, I get 72 degrees, which is the angle of the sector. Similarly, for Sam, I cancel out this 0 and these zeros. So I get 108 degrees. That is the angle of sector for Sam's plot of land. So in a similar manner, if I proceed with all the suns with their respective values, 
for their plot of land. I find that for Ankit, I get 72 degrees, as I showed you. For Sam, I get 108 degrees. For Gopal, I get 54 degrees. For Mohan, I get 90 degrees. And lastly, for Suresh, I get 36 degrees. So from these values, it is clear to us who is getting a greater plot of land. It is Sam. So now I plot these data on the pie chart. So how do I do it? With the help of a protractor, I mark out the respective angles. So for Ankit, the angle for the sector we had obtained was 72. So thus, I get this sector for Ankit. So this is the sector on the plot of land which Ankit will be getting. And in a similar manner, with the help of the protractor, I mark out the other angles for the other suns. And thus, I get the respective plots of land which each of these suns will be getting. So thus, as you can see, with the help of a pie chart, I have pictorially represented the data and also helped settle the dispute in between the five suns over the circular plot of land which their father had left behind for them. Pie charts are useful not only in case of circular objects, but in case of any object or any data that you consider. It helps us represent the data in a pictorial format in the form of shares of a pie. Now let's say we consider some other data. Let's say across a day, we consider your activities. So for example, you spend eight hours sleeping. Let's say you spend another eight hours at school. Let's say you spend four hours watching TV or playing and the remaining four hours doing all your other activities like eating, studying, etc. So this is the share of activities across a day for you. Now if I have to represent this data on a pie chart, this would look like So over here, this share of the pie represents your time spent sleeping. This share of the pie represents your time spent at school. This share of the pie represents your time playing or watching television. And the remaining share of the pie represents your time doing other activities like eating, studying, etc. So one look at this pie will tell you how much time you are indulging in watching TV or how much time you are indulging in sleeping. So over here, by looking at this slice, I can say that this share or the share of this particular activity is greater than either of these two activities. So in this manner, for any particular data set, we can use a pie chart to give us a pictorial representation of the shares of the different variates in the given data set.